Hey now, Malika Lee here, host of Feel Good, the podcast, the title for now. And what I wanted to delve into a little bit today, succinctly, is the idea that I've heard Oprah say, and that's who I'm going to give credit for saying it. I'm not sure if she got it from somewhere else, but that life is a classroom. So then, going back to if you heard the previous episode about my having Virgo in my chart. I am not a Virgo as far as a sun sign, but I do have some characteristics of it in the sense of it having a granular curiosity and understanding of things. And so, you know, what does, what does that mean that life is a classroom? So in my inquiry over the years, I'll just say a couple of things. One is that in school, we look at education and learning as mostly an intellectual exercise. It's from my personal experience that on a soul level, we learn experientially in our own holograms. You're an avatar in your own holograms. So an analogy of our life curriculum and how yours is custom designed just for you, boo, for you to be learning what you are intended to learn, given a different context. And I'll talk about context and how important it is, at least how it's been in my life later, is that imagine that we're all on a a freeway. Let's say I-5, Interstate 5 runs. It's on the West Coast, runs down through Southern California, up, I think, even through Canada. It's bumper-to-bumper traffic. And, of course, in this traffic, there's a multitude of cars. So as this relates to our curriculum is that there are a lot of people having a shared experience at the same time. So that shared experience might be due to geography, based on the weather, if it's really hot, that wherever you are on this freeway, if it's 85 degrees outside, it's 85 degrees pretty much for everybody. Okay. Similar in our curriculum, maybe based on geography, where you live, there are shared experiences of multiple people based on our environment. Then we're going to get into the kind of car and ride you have. If it's 85 degrees outside and let's say you don't have air conditioning and your windows don't work and aren't rolling down. Well, you're going to have a very different experience than the car next to you that has functioning air conditioning. And the little vents and the seats and everything now that they have that can cool you down. So I'm going to make an analogy for the cars that we're driving. as kind of like our physical bodies and our body temples. There are so many stereotypes that we make based on people's appearance, whether it's the color of their skin, whether it's their gender, whether it's their religion. And these, the form of the car, just like it can shape the experience on the freeway, the form that we take physically can also shape our earthly experience in our classroom because of the stereotypes and the unconscious biases that people have basically against one another in some instances. So that's an example, an analogy related to the car you're in. So now let's take a step back and not go into the analogy of it being a body, but let's say that there are multiple people in the car. So now you're inside the car and you could be in silence and not have your radio on. You could be talking on the phone. You could be playing some Jaws. You could be playing some hip hop, R&B, or some country music, a good old country song. So perspective of what car you're in, also everyone is having a different experience within the shared experience of all being in bumper to bumper traffic. So I would like in, let's say the music you're listening to is to the frequency of your thoughts and feelings. So there are going to be some people that are listening to different music and having different experiences based on their interpretation and thoughts about that experience. So some people might be sitting in that traffic and mad, irritated, maybe they were already running late. And so they are stressed the mm out. There might be somebody else who's like, hey, you know what? It's all good. I'm just going to make the most of it. I'm stuck here. There's not anything I can do. So let me play some music and have a good time. So they are both in traffic, but having very different experiences of the traffic that they're experiencing. 
so I'll say that's another layer of the curriculum is our free will to feel and think as we would like. I think we also see this in families, right? Where to make this, extrapolate this as far as multiple people in the same car could be having very different experiences. Just like kids may have different opinions of their mother and father. I've seen this so often where they, you know, siblings may argue about mom was this way. No, she wasn't. Mom was that way. That's another experience and an example of the, the thoughts and the feelings. But also if you're sitting in the passenger seat and you happen to look out your window and you're sitting next to that happy person who is singing and just having a time of their lives singing off key, you might get tickled by that and laugh. And yet the person sitting in the driver's seat, unless you tell them, may not even notice that person. And so they're not experiencing the joy that you're getting vicariously from that other person. So where you sit in the car has an impact on what you see, which also has an impact on what you think and what you feel. These are all the different examples and layers of our particular curriculums, each designed, in my theory, from a soul perspective, for us to learn some things custom for you. And so I'll get into why I think context matters, but from a soul perspective, there are so many layers to our classrooms and the purposes that they serve. And if nothing else, I just wanted to give a little bit more detail and make an analogy. If you aren't familiar with that life as a classroom or haven't thought much about or delve into what does that really mean, I hope that this example gives like grounds it in something and and makes it accessible and relatable in a deeper way. That's my aim is to like ground, like I said, the reality and spirituality to ground this and make it relevant in the day to day life. So I'm going to sign off with that for now and we'll build on that concept a bit later. But I just want to say and share that and leave you with a wondering of what do you believe is true about this life and about this world based on your curriculum? What do you think is true about you? And do you are you wired in a way that you find it hard to believe if someone has a different reality than you? Isn't it true that some, like the analogy in the, in the cars and the different music, somebody could say, hey, country music's not playing because all I hear is jazz in my car. But both can be true at the same time. And so it's just kind of a wondering and a holding of like sometimes we can we can be uh, judgmental or black and white and, and invalidate other people's experiences because it's not our experience. But if it's true that we could have all these myriad of experiences in the car sitting on I-5, then isn't that true also with life? And is your experience and your belief about yourself and your belief about the world around you, and maybe even your belief about a higher power of God, are those limiting you or are they serving you in some way? Or both. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it at here. At, I'm gonna leave it right there for right now. Uh, if, I, if I've given you some food for thought and made you say, hmm, I certainly appreciate you giving me some love back by subscribing to the podcast by giving me some of your feedback and comments via a rating. If you do it on iTunes, I'll be able to see it and give you a shout out in a future episode. And I also have to give a shout out right here, right now with much gratitude to my teachers, doctors, Ron and Mary Holnick at the University of Santa Monica, who really broke down for me in a classroom format about soul curriculum. They didn't do this analogy, but it, it answered a lot of questions that I had in my training with them. So I want to say much love and gratitude and appreciation for their teachings and the impact it's had on my life and getting a deeper understand, understanding of my curriculum and getting liberation from some of my curriculum. It's still a work in progress as we all are. All right, much, much love. If no one's told you that they love you today, I'm going to tell you as your friend, as your sister and companion on this path, honey, we can't do it alone, uh, that I'm here for you, that I have so much love for you, and I just want to encourage you 
to keep going. Keep going. You got this. It might be hard, but you got this. Keep going. Keep growing. And keep letting your light shine. Bye for now.